Hello, we're going to talk about recursion in this video, which is a very rare and contradictory concept in the sense that I tend to think of it a bit as being both extremely hard to understand and also incredibly simple. It's, a, it's an odd one, but a really fascinating concept in programming. So recursion is very quick to define. Recursion is when you have a subroutine calling itself in order to solve a problem. So a subroutine being a block of code and to do its job, it's going to call itself. So run another instance of its own code, which is why it can be difficult to understand, but very simple uh, definition at least. Now, this is really valuable because it allows us to define a problem in terms of itself. So as long as you find, as long as you figure out the essence of a problem, you can use this essence again and again, but crucially each time you've got to simplify it so it gets a smaller and smaller and smaller problem. Now to give a real life-ish example of this, or at least an analogy, you can think of it as a bit like Russian dolls, Matryoshka dolls, I'm pretty sure they're called, where you've got this outer one and you open up this wooden doll and inside are smaller and smaller and smaller versions of the exact same doll. Now you reach a point where you can't get any smaller. I was usually as a kid pretty disappointed when I got to that point, and that's it. So it's the same problem, the same thing, we're just using it again and again in different and smaller versions of itself. And that's what recursion is like. Now code to calculate factorials is used in every other video on recursion, so you have to forgive me, but it's a great example to get us started. The factorial of a positive integer is the product of all of the numbers between the number and one. So you're multiplying all of the numbers from that number all the way down to one. Now, I always found it a bit odd, but the symbol for factorial is an exclamation mark. Seems very needy to me, but there we go. So four factorial is the same as going, well, four times three times two times one, and in this case, it's 24. Now, you could solve it with a loop. You could solve it recursively, okay? And solving things with a loop and recursively are two different approaches. So the loop approach is what you'd call an iterative solution, and the recursive approach is what I'm going to show you. So you, you might want to try and solve this using just a loop, it wouldn't be too hard. Um, the next video, I'm going to really compare and contrast recursion and loops, but they are different, okay? So while we can solve it using just a, a for loop, say, we're not going to in this case. Now, the reason why I'm not going to is because actually we can we can represent factorials in a very simple way mathematically and in a way which really lends itself to recursion. So as a general rule, we can say n as a number factorial is the same as n, the number itself, times n minus one factorial. So four factorial is the same as going well four times three factorial. Three factorial is the same as going three times two factorial and so on and so on. Although we can't go forever, right? We run out of numbers eventually. We can't just keep going because one factorial, we haven't got any numbers coming below it because one is our base. One factorial is just one. And so is zero factorial, oddly. But one factorial is one, so therefore once we get to one factorial, we just set that to be one and we are, we're good. We can repeat this first rule lots of times as the problem gets smaller and smaller until we reach this floor. So, the terms we need to be aware of in the case of recursion is this first rule is what we use most of the time and it's what we would call the general case. So what we do generally speaking and the general case will aim to simplify your problem using itself. It's wherever recursion kicks in. Whereas, one factorial in this particular example is an example of a base case. What we do when we can't get any more simple and we've got to start solving the problem essentially. We've got to start working backwards. Now if we convert this to code, which we can do very simply just with if statements, I've stuck it in a subroutine. So I've got a pseudocode subroutine called factorial. It takes in a parameter n, which is our number. So if I stuck in four as an argument, it would give us 24 at the end. And you'll notice there are no loops. We're using it without loops because recursion is an alternative to loops. So um, we can hopefully see how this connects up, right? I've got if n is not equal to one, then I'm going to do n times the factorial of n minus one, 
which is our general case. So for any other number apart from one, I'm gonna sort of pass a buck and call itself with a next factorial. So what it does, it kind of shoves the problem down the line and simplifies and simplifies and simplifies without really doing much until we reach the base case. Until n becomes one, that's when we actually start to do something and we return an actual answer, which is one. And it works its way back up the line until the entire problem is solved. But we can spot this recursion because we're calling itself within itself. I've got factorial being called inside the definition of factorial. And you've also got the clearly separated general case and base case. Now that base case is essential because without it, it will never stop this series of recursive calls. It's gonna call itself and call itself and call itself forever unless we've got a base case. Now it won't in reality actually go forever because eventually it's going to run out of memory and crash or there might be a limit in the IDE or the compiler which stops you at a certain level of recursive calls. But the base case being correctly defined is essential. We need to be able to reach it eventually, otherwise we'll get errors. Now, the base case is also called the stopping condition because it's what stops the succession of subroutine calls. Now, hopefully this one slide was enough to understand what recursion is. If you're just revising, that may well be enough but I appreciate that this is confusing. So in the next video, I'm gonna walk through exactly how this factorial subroutine works and also give another recursive bit of code and go through that as well.